Hey guys, good morning. Uh, back here at Jones Trolling Motor, and we're going to fix a problem that we created when we set the boat up, and we didn't realize we were going to create this problem. So we put the Mercury Smart gauge in here. Well, guess what? You got a problem when you put a Bass Boat Technologies dual mount right across there. So what we want to do now, as you guys know, we're, we're running the, the Garmin mostly for side imaging, but we got the Humminbird in here specifically for maps. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect uh, basically the NEMA to the Garmin unit so that we can run all of our motor data, mainly uh, RPMs, through this unit. So Taylor's going to show us exactly. He said, again, this is a real simple thing to do. Very simple. And, and so what do you need to do this? So you've got to have a NEMA 2000 Mercury Gateway. Uh, you can get it from a Mercury dealer. It's uh, around $300. Don't check me on that. Um, but uh, very simple task. Is it that expensive? I don't think so. Okay. Go ahead. So once you've got the gateway, the only other thing you have to have is a NEMA 2000 network. You've already got one in your boat. It's just a plug and play accessory. If you don't, very simple to build one. There's a starter kit we sell that you can put one in your boat. So pop the cowlin off. Right here is where a lot of your plugs and accessory plugs are back here. Just pop that off, set it off to the side. And this plug right here, see the purple top on it? It's right there. All you gotta do is pop this little cover off of it. Squeeze right there. And it's just a cover cap. And this is the gateway right here. Plug it plugs into the motor, purple just like that top I was showing you right there. And there's your NEMA 2000 end where you would plumb it into your network. So all you gotta do, just line this guy up right here. Snap in, and then route your cable. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up running this end right here through to your boot to get a NEMA cable from your dash or wherever your backbone for your network is to this guy right here. And that's all there is to it. So you just route this around the bottom side of this motor keeping everything out of the way of the pinch points. And this is going to end up just sitting in here. And then you'll run your NEMA 2000 cable that we're about to run up through your boot up here and just make a connection. And then that will just plug directly into the into the brain, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then from there, it, it reads it. There's not another cable that goes to the unit, or is there another? So on the backbone uh, for NEMA 2000, you have to have power plumbed into it, just 12 volt power and then you'll have a cable going to your unit that you're wanting to display it on, and then the cable coming to this gateway right here, and that's so all we, you gotta have. We can show that at the end here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we, you guys saw us back there under the cowling, you saw uh, how that got wired, what Taylor did back there, so now we're gonna show you what we've done at the front, and then also kind of where you go through the selections to get the readouts. All right, so just as a, quick little deal to show for the people that don't know NEMA 2000 real well. You can't see up underneath the dash because of the lighting to see where we actually did this, but this is the setup that Ken has under the dash. Uh, and in the NEMA kit, if you were to buy one, you'll have terminating resistors that end the network on this end and on this end. And then these are your T's where the information's coming in and, and out. Like in his setup, this one is his graph right here. This one is power, you have to have 12 volt power. And then this one right here is his data coming from the engine. So all it's doing is it's making, you know, a loop with power and with data flowing through here. So once we got all that in, powered up. All right, so on these graphs, uh, on the GPS map family, you got your menu over here on the side. When you first get all this set up, plugged in, turned on, you're gonna come down here to the helm and gauges. And right here, you've got your engines. So right now we've just got the key turned on. We don't have the motor cranked in here in the shop. But what you're gonna come up to is a page similar to this. This one's already been set up, but where you can come in here and set up how you want your gauges, what data you want to read out, all that kind of stuff. Main thing for Ken is he's wanting RPMs, you know, engine hours, um, you know, and then he's also got a speed here that way, which he's got going off GPS speed, the more accurate speed. So you can come in here to the menu and edit page. And if you change the layout here, you see that we have all kinds of gauge layouts, 
I mean, there's infinite amounts of data that you can put on these. But one thing about it, if we just go right here and just say we want to change this GPS speed, if we push and hold and we want to replace data, just in here in the engine tab, you have all this different information. Now, depending on your motor, depending on how your boat's set up, what all's hooked to NEMA 2000, it varies. It's going to show all these options, but you know there's only certain ones that you're actually going to be able to see. So like on my jack plate, jack plate, there's no way my jack plate's connected. Exactly. Okay. So like you know your voltage, you'll be able to see that because you got voltage going to your motor off your cranking battery. Your trim is you know also displayed up here on the gauges you know already because it goes through the motor for a height. So you'd be able to see that your RPMs, um, oil temp, oil pressure, you know those kind of things you'd definitely be able to see. Oh, fuel flow rate, that's interesting. Yeah. If, I don't want to see that. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and that's for boats offshore that have all kinds of tank sensors put into the network, all that kind of stuff. So that's where that would come into play. Okay. So if we wanted to go back <clears throat> to one of those screens, show me again how I get where if I want 20 different things on there at one time. So menu, edit gauge pages, and then change your layout. Got it. Simple. And then you've got all your different layouts. Click that center one. Go back. That so, one right yeah. there. Good gosh. So again, the more stuff you have connected through the NEMA, the more stuff you can add to that. That's right. Okay. Sailing wind gauge. Pretty sure we don't need that. <laughs> and so now this is back just to the base page that we were just on. And we'll just go through a quick setup here. And everything that we're doing is under the engine tab because we just did the NEMA 2000 to the motor. So on this one, do your RPMs. And you can actually set your limits. So like this motor here operates max range of around 6,400 RPM. So what we did here on the gauge limits, max is 7,000, but the rated max is 6,400. So you can see the red tab right there showing oh, it's your max yeah, amount. Yeah, okay. You're going to be hitting the rev limiter. That's right. And on this one right here, what did we do? We did GPS speed on this one, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And so you can set it with or without the digital inset. that will actually give you the digital reading. I want that and you just sure. turn that on right yep. there. I saw it pop up. So, and we'll do the same thing over here. And down here. Want to go to the engine. I went down too far. Go to hours right there. And he hit that nail on the head on that. He said he thought he had about eight, eight and a half hours on it. So, yeah, the boat's only four months old. I, you know, much as I'm fishing these days, <laughs> what you get when you get a four month old, <clears throat> the boat's three weeks younger than the sun. And there you go. You're Perfect. set up and ready to roll. And and uh, we did it on the last video, but show guys how to add that screen to our favorites page. So if you come to the home screen and you want to go up here to favorites, we've already got it here now, but what you would do is you'd hit menu and add to favorites. Come back down here to where you found that page originally. And Damn. now you've got it up there again. And then if you want to delete it, you just simply menu. And remove. And then hold hit, it down. hit the trash can right there. She's gone. Awesome. You want to go play with it? Let's go play with it. All right, so since we did this before and it was so popular, we're going to just talk real quick. You guys got inventory again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it, it appears that they have the same ones they did before. They don't. They've got a bunch of 80-pound of uh, the Ultrax. Now, that's a 24-volt, right? 24-volt system, standard universal sonar. I hook up to pretty much any graph on the market for you know basic 2D. Um, Standard eye pilot, give you the spot lock and all that stuff. And a $2,400 retail price, really good seller. Okay, and then you've got the rarest of rare, two ghosts. Yep. Got some big Ultrexes. So the ghost, you know, something I've never asked before on the ghost, it has a built in transducer. Yes. The, Does go it the ghost and the force on the Garmin side, what they did when they did their built in transducers. They are brand specific. They don't do a universal option like Minkota does, which Minkota, when you go up to their down image or side image built in, it's Hummingbird. Right. Um, on Lowrance, they come standard with a built in HDI, which is Lowrance's down scan in 2D. 
And then on the Force, it comes with a built-in GT54, which is 2D down scan and side scan, high definition. They have side scan on the front throttle motor? Built in. I've tried package. that. It does not work so great. But then we've got uh, seven Forces, okay, Garmin's. We've got, lad ducks out of the camera view. We got a bunch of uh, uh, Garmin units. Now this is the unit one past the one I'm running, yes, right? that is the newest one um, that come out a few months after Ken got his. Um, biggest things they changed on them, uh, new processor, it, it's compatible with the new um, uh, GT56, 36 high definition transducers in the XSV model now. And the look of them is a little more sleek, a little more compact, more like the 8000 series. And talk about Talk to us about transducers, what what you can buy new right now and the differences in them. So, you know, we've always been very, very heavy on the GT30s. Um, 30s were just the, the all-around good picture, dependable, um, and we still do push those. They work great on the standard definition graphs that don't have the high-def processors. Um, and you said, by the way, this now has a high-def processor, yes, it does. the 1223. Yeah. Got it. So, what they have now is you'll hear GT56 and 36. Uh, that's their new high definition models. The 36 is just like the GT30, it's the two in one version, only down scan and side scan in this, so that you can put a high speed puck in the hole and get depth on plane, that kind of thing, um, for 2D. So, differences what I'm seeing out of my units right now, I run the 8000 series. This right here is as close, if not better, than mega imaging now. And it is as clear a picture as I've ever seen personally. And that's coming from somebody that's ran both brands. And you're running a 36 with an in hull puck? Yes. Okay. And right. that, if, and in, in an aluminum boat, you're pretty much stuck with running the uh, 56, which, same principle, same, you know, crystals in the transducer. It's going to give you a great picture. But, if you have a bass rig, you know, a fiberglass rig, and you're wanting the best pictures you can get, it's better to do the, the split pair, to do the GT8, you know, epoxy in the hole for your 2D, and then do your GT36 on the back, because the less things you're trying to do in one transducer, the better, the clearer. Sure, yeah. And I see we've got live scope down here. Yes, we got live scopes in stock. Um, right now, everything on Garmin, it's pretty flowing except for the uh, 8000 series. If you're looking for 8000 series, I've only got a few of them. If you want one, you better call it quick. But you also have Hope Well, you got Hummingbirds. We got Hummingbird stock too. Um, 15s? Yep, we got a couple of Helix 15s down here. Um, and those have been about the hardest ones to find. We got one more of them stuck right there. Um, got a Solix 12 right there. Got a Helix 9. Got even a Solix 15. We sold several of those here lately. Got a couple of uh, 12 DIs, good for running 360, that kind of thing. And, and you save some bucks doing that, right? Yes. That's a good front unit. That's what I run on the front of my boat. Yeah, you save several hundred bucks over running the you know the side image model, which you don't have to have for doing 360. Right, yeah, that's what we've done on my boat. And again, just trying to save a few bucks. Um, we've got, even with Lawrence, we've got their 12 lives in stock. And we've got their active target systems. Holy uh, cow, you got a bunch of them. Yeah. They have been a, a pretty good seller here lately. Uh, a lot of guys out there starting to get everything worked out with them. They're getting very popular. And, and guys, if you didn't see it, I'll post a, a link to the video at the top where we talked about really the main difference between the Lawrence and the Garmin is cone angle. Mm -hmm. So I did a whole video series on that. I'll, I'll post there where you can see that up there at the top of the video somewhere. Okay, so the last couple of questions on specifically Hummingbird. We've got Apex coming out. Yep, Apex is coming out soon. Since I've been here today, you've got a call about 360. Yeah. And Mega 360 Live. Yep. Is there any news on any of those other than pre-order? Um, nothing new other than pre-order right now and back order on 360s. Uh, they're still at a nationwide shortage right now. We don't know. I'm sure it's probably supply issues as far as materials. Um, and probably the same thing for the Apex, because I know Humber's dealt with that on screen material this year. 
because whatever material they use is also big in the uh, TV companies versus what Lawrence and Garmin uses. That's why they've been so hard to get. So literally the glass over the yeah. screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, the Apex is still in pre-order. Um, that's your new stretched resolution graph that Hummingbird's making, which is going to be similar to the 8000 series in Garmin. Um, but as of right now, the biggest question for everybody is still Mega 360s. We've had them on order for well over 150 days now, since the last time we've seen one here in the store. Um, and on the new Mega Live that's coming out, uh, we've got a couple of local pros that we know that have them on their boats. I've seen them work, um, but we still haven't got a for sure date other than sometime in September. But until we know something new, that's the date we're going with right now. If somebody wants to lock one up, can they go ahead and buy it? Yes. What we do is we do a uh, deposit 20% down on them, and then you can lock your spot into getting one of them. We've got somewhere between 50 and 70 pre-ordered right now. Holy cow. Um, and I think three quarters of them are sold. So we do still have some pre-order slots. Oh, I see. I thought, okay, yeah, I'm with yeah. you. So there are still, okay, good deal. Uh, and then last thing, we talked about this before. Actually, we talked about it out there. It may be a different video, but chargers. You got yeah. you got the charger you didn't have last time we were here. Yeah, we do have chargers. Um, as with everything this year, it's still a battle to keep them in stock. But we've got the 315 Minn Kota, the regular digital charger that's what a lot of people with 24 volt systems use that aren't running all the electronics, you know, all that. Um, but we've got the two bank, three bank, and four bank uh, Minn Kota precision chargers. The four bank, 440, is what you're going to want to use, you know, for the guy that's got a 36 volt trolling motor, you know, 112 volt cranking battery, you know, and, and that'll get you where it can charge lead acid, gel, AGM and even some brands of lithium, but that goes by the lithium manufacturer. Um, but it's settable, it's a 10 amp per bank, so that's gonna get you a good hot charge. Um, and then the reason why we keep- a lot And by of the way, that's the one that will read, you can have multiple types of batteries and it'll charge every battery yeah, correctly. It's independent per bank, where if you had a AGM cranking battery, you can set it to that. And then if all your trolling batteries are the lead acid wet cell batteries, you can set them all to that, it's independent per bank. Um, a lot of people ask us why we have so many of these 230 uh, PC chargers. For guys that are running heavy, heavy electronics, you know, like uh, three to five graphs on the boat, live scope, 360, active target, that kind of thing. If you're running one of the big Trojan or uh, Odyssey AGM batteries, we've went to putting these in boats because AGM batteries take better off of a hot charge, you know, the higher amp charge. So we're running those on that cranking battery because if you double those leads, you're looking at 30 amps going to that battery and it keeps it, they'll charge up under a lower uh, amperage and it just takes them a little longer to get up to hot and cooking. But that guy right there, if you're fishing a lot of tournaments back to back days, that's going to keep them hot longer and not have so much charge time. Interesting. And also, we do have some used trolling motors, right? We yeah. got some Ultrexes. We've got some Ultrexes, a couple 36 volt models. There's um, more in the back, he said. Yeah, there's a bunch more in the back because these things come in and out day by day. And once we take one off a boat, we go through it. You know, if there's anything wrong with it, you know, we get that fixed up and then get them out here for sale. But a lot of them never even make it to the rack. That's how quick they go out of here. Um, so just call and tell them what you're looking for. Yeah, just call us and let us know what you're looking for. And sometimes, you know, we keep our install scheduled out, you know, a week, two weeks in advance anyway. So sometimes we know, hey, we're going to get one of that model that you're wanting. Even if we don't have it right now, we may be getting it in a week and a half. And if nobody else is on a list waiting for one of them to come in, as soon as we get off the boat, we'll give you a call and we'll get it put on for you. Give it a call. To get a, get a call, take it apart, make sure nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. All right, guys, so that's the inventory here at Jones Trolling Motor in Texas County, Texas. Oh, and yeah, you know what? That's a good point. There are, so there's not a lot of these left in existence. If you are a Talon lover, they've got a couple sets of them. Yep, we've got two of them. They are the um, 12 foot models, I believe. Good gosh. Yep, they're 12 foot, silver and black, so they're the original color scheme they come out with very first. Um, so they'll you know, match with a lot of boats. And I've got a set of the brackets um, to put on there, the modular dull style brackets. Um, make somebody a good deal on the set of them if they want them. That sounds like a sale price. That's right.
<laughs> so just give us a call and we can get you hooked up on those. Guys, phone number's at the bottom of the page there. Uh, call Taylor, Michael, Lad, the whole team here. They'll take care of you. Thanks for tuning in, guys.